What's going on guys? Chris here at Palmer Aquatics. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about nothing but fish tanks because we're complete weirdos and we let this crazy hobby of keeping animals in glass boxes completely take over our lives. Today's particular episode is completely devoted to the Vieja Cichlid. I just did a video that I got a new Vieja Cichlid and yes you can pronounce it so many different ways. Vieja, Vieja, Vieja like troll me in the comments and let me know how you say it. It really depends where you live. But one big difference is I'm not going to be the one blabbing today. It's going to be somebody else. And I urge you to subscribe to this guy's channel. He's a cool cat covered in tattoos. He's a complete cichlid psychopath. He knows 10x the amount I do about fish. And that's why I reached out to him. Chris Biggs. And guys... Subscribe to his channel if you have a brain in your head. Hey guys, it's Biggs. Now, thank you, Chris, for inviting me to come and talk to you guys today a little bit about a truly wonderful group of fishes. These things are absolutely near and dear to me. These are the Vieja, okay? Now, this is, Vieja is actually a formally proposed subgenera that was actually of all the, uh, of the true genera, which used to be Cyclosoma back in the late 80s. Sven Kullender went and just obliterated Cyclosoma and relegated it to like eight or nine specimens from South America, and everything's good. And then people like Dr. Robert Rush Miller, in his big book that since passed away, but Dr. Robert Rush Miller then took up the reins and started relegating and breaking up and figuring out wherever they needed to be for a lot of the Central Americans. And a lot of new ichthyologists today have been taking up that work now since, and we're starting to see the Vieja and all the other different groups breaking up. And that's good. That's actually very, very good, because well, we'll get into that in a little minute. Vieja, until somewhat recently, was comprised of 16 species. But after a lot of work, as mentioned, this is now relegated down to only eight. And I believe that even after a bit more work, there's probably that number may change again. Now, the remaining eight species, the type specimen being the, uh, the, the bifasciatum, and everybody's ever seen a true bifasciatum from the Rio Chacamax. It's a bright canary yellow and bright red face. Absolutely breathtaking fish, but it gets big. Now, that's the type specimen. The other, the other seven are breed hori, fenestratum, gutulatum, which is also known as the robin's egg cichlid. Doesn't get quite as big. Lays baby blue, bright baby blue eggs. It's absolutely super cool to see. Heart wee guy, uh, the, the, the amazing maculacauda, also known in the trade as the black belt cichlid. Probably one of the more aggressive of the VAI types. But it's a super unique species of vieja because this one is one of the only species of freshwater fish that actually can migrate out into pure marine habitats. It lives in, in, in different areas within uh, Honduras and Guatemala and it actually ventures out into the sea because it lives in these estuaries. And that's part of the reason that this species is going to prol proliferate a much larger area. Uh, Melanurus. Uh, Melanurus is a, is, a, is a very, very widespread one. This is also the one that is the primary designate for the former fish that we used to call Sinspilus. And Chris, I believe the, the fish that you have is actually a juvenile Sinspilus, sorry, Melanurus. Uh, and the common name for that in the trade sometimes is often called the Quetzal cichlid, named after the Quetzal, the parrot, that is multicolored. It is an, an absolutely breathtaking fish when fully mature. And the males and the females both get color, although the males get larger and a little bit more colorful in the big giant noggin on their head. And the last species that goes in that group is the natum. Now, prior to the split from 16 to 8 species, I had always coined this group of fish uh, with a moniker, and uh, I'd always called these fish the water cows, okay? Their pharyngeal plates, or their dental plates that are in the back of their throats, which is one of the traits that makes these guys a true cichlid, uh, and that combined with the intestinal tract length. Now, this, these, this, these type of things are diagnostic things. These are measurable things, tangible things that we can measure. These things help to work as one small part of the piece of the puzzle in differentiation of species. But using those two things particularly, I can tell you the entire dietary habits of these fish. And based on the teeth structures or dental structures on the pharyngeal plates and their, and their intestinal tract, these guys are primarily herbivorous. These are veggie fish. They need to eat a very, very strong vegetable-based diet. Dissections of these things in the wild, you would also find a fair bit of insect larvae, maybe some, uh, some shrimps and stuff like that, but the protein levels are fairly, fairly low. Okay? Too much protein in a diet in captivity for these guys can lead to extreme obesity, shorter lifespan, and in, in worst case scenarios, too much could also cause all sorts of bloating issues because the body just cannot pass it, uh, and that could lead to death. So good, good quality, veggie-based diet, little bits of protein, you should be good to go. 
okay? For the most part, as compared to other Mesoamerican cichlids, uh, the water cows are fairly docile in nature. However, their robust stature, these guys are big, giant, heavy-bodied fish. These things can often be used in aquariums with far more aggressive. So you could keep these with some of the amphilophid types, like your red devil types, and they'll be able to live fine, usually, depending on what species, obviously. Uh, and then you could also keep them with some of the maybe more docile ones, like your thyricthes, like your firemouth types and stuff like that. I know your cribaheros, which are all your different sifters. So in Central America, or Mesoamerica, they have the very similar type of style of, of stratification of fishes as they do in all the other areas of the world. Your water cows are your big giant lurkers that just can go move wherever they want. They set up their territory, they breed, they're strong enough to hold their own in that territory. Your thyricthes are your firemouth types or your little invertebrate pickers. Your cribaheros types are like your geophagus types. They like to sift through the substrate looking for morsels of food. Your parachromus, your jaguars, your Friedrich stylis, your dovis, those are all your ambush and cruise predators. They dominate the river systems and they swallow whatever they can get. And that's a very, very generalized scope of it. But when you look at Mesoamerican cichlids, that's kind of how everything works, okay? One of the real primary factors for splitting up the original genera was uh, up from 16 down to 8, and again, that may change, is the fact that several of them, you see, you look at the big Melanuris, or you look at some of those ones, they're big, giant lunker, big type water, why well, I call them water cows, right? These big, giant fish. But then you look at some of the other ones that are a bit more specialized. Uh, some of the ones in the genera, say Chuco, for example, which is one of the new genera as well as Vieja. Uh, you have Microphthalmus, you have Godmanai, some of these. You have Mascaheros, you have some di many different types of genera there. But some of them are much more, have taken that specialization even further. Some will even very, very extremely fast water, like, uh, like uh, Microphthalmus. So it's got a very much more bullet-shaped type body with a lot of fatty deposits in the head to handle that, that real rough lifestyle of living in the, in the current. So each one of them is a little bit different. So maybe this will go for mate. Maybe it's going to change again. It probably will. But we just have to roll with the changes. Now, if you guys don't speak Spanish, you likely we probably wouldn't even know this. But the actual generic name Vieja literally translates to old woman. I'm not really sure the meaning behind why they went with that. I'm not sure if Steindachner, if he maybe looked at it and says, me, that reminded him of an old woman on the specimens that he found that he used for dissections. I really don't know. Maybe he needed a new set of glasses. I don't know. You guys be the judge. Regardless, I think they are all breathtakingly stunning fish. There's so many wide varieties of colors. They're fascinating mating behaviors. These guys, everybody should at least try one once. I think they make absolutely wonderful wet pets. Just make sure that you have a fairly large aquarium, as most of them get fairly large. Uh, expect them all to get a roughly about a foot or larger, okay? And they're going to need very, very good water quality. Some live in, in large rivers, so there's always going to be water flow, so like a big canister or trickle filters or something like that. But you give them good water quality. Uh, they'll eat any plants you're going to put in your tank, so maybe keep plants out. Uh, give them some good food, basically veggies based. I think you guys will do great. So hope you guys will enjoy it. Give your tank a try. Try some Vieja. Thanks, guys. Take care.